Hello, welcome to Conversation Four, Part Two. Ever, never, 了人生，这是我此生听过最烂的笑话。Oh, Dad, stop telling lame jokes, okay? You know many ways to tell stories about the past or about your life, but maybe you can't say it strong enough. Well, we can use the words ever and never to emphasize what we're trying to say. So in this lesson, we'll learn in all of history with the word ever. The word ever means at any time, so we can look back at history and think about any time. Oh, oh, and ever can be used to emphasize something. And then we'll learn. Tell me about your life. So we'll make questions with the word ever. Ever questions, and you can put ever into a sentence to emphasize things and ask about. Hey, at any time did you do this, or did you do it in your life? And then we'll learn never have I ever, using the words never and not ever, to emphasize that something didn't even happen one time. It never happened. And then, last but not least, we'll learn for a long time, using the phrase ever since. Now you know the word since, meaning from then and then going forward. But if you use the words ever since, it emphasizes that it continued and never stopped. First up, let's take a look at in all of history. We can use the word "ever" to emphasize what has happened. Okay, here's our first example. Bob told Amy about every night market he's ever been to. Now we could say this sentence without the word "ever." You could say Bob told Amy about every night market he's been to, and that would just be simply he says, "Oh, I've been to these night markets." But if you add the word "ever," it emphasizes that it's everything in his whole life. So Bob told Amy about every night market he's ever been to, and here you're making it stronger, and it sounds like he's telling a long, long story. So maybe he goes one by one by one by one, telling details about every night market, and maybe it's too much information. Okay. Here's another example of how we could use "ever" this way. Timmy told his friends about all the girls he's ever kissed. Oh, Timmy, don't kiss and tell. Come on, man, you could do better than that. You, again, you could say the sentence without the word "ever." Timmy told his friends about all the girls he's kissed, and he said, "Oh, I've kissed twenty different girls." Ho ho ho! But. If we add the word "ever," we're emphasizing, making it stronger that we're, he's telling in his whole life, in all of history. Maybe he goes into detail one by one by one. First, I kissed Sarah, then I kissed Amy, then I kissed Jenny. Oh, Timmy, too much information. Okay, T M I. You can keep it to yourself. So here, the word "ever" emphasizes he's telling his whole history. Telling too much. Here's another way to use "ever" to talk about in all history, but this is to describe something. Here's an example. Last night I saw the best movie ever. You could say the sentence "Last night I saw the best movie," and then you just say it's the best movie. But if we add the word "ever," it's saying in all of history. It's emphasizing, making it stronger. Look at any time in history, and there aren't any better movies. So maybe you think it's the best movie in your life or in all of history. So we use this to emphasize or exaggerate, saying, "Whoa, it's so good!" Now here's another example. Lucas just told me the worst joke ever. Oh, I didn't even smile. Ooh, terrible joke. The worst joke ever. So we have adjective, noun, ever. You could say the worst joke, and it just means it's really bad. But to compare it to all time, we can use the word ever. So look at any joke in history. In all of history, this is the worst joke ever. So ever is used here to describe a thing, and we're comparing it to all of history, and it's used to emphasize and to exaggerate. Maybe it's not the worst joke in history, but that's how you feel right now. Oh God, it's too terrible. 
We can also use ever in another way to emphasize in all of history. This summer has been hotter than ever. So you can use the word than ever to emphasize it's super, super hot comparing to all of history. Pick any year in history. 1992, 1903. Compared to any year in history, this has been hotter than ever. Really? Maybe not, but we can say this to exaggerate. Here's another example. My friend has been exercising more than ever before. Here is for emphasis, but maybe not exaggerating. So my friend has been exercising more than ever before. So we're comparing exercising more than what? Ever before. Ever before means in all of history or all of his life. So your friend is -ha -hoo -ha -hoo, exercising a lot. Wow, good for you. More than ever before. Now this could be a real thing. Maybe they've never really exercised and it's more than ever before. Maybe more than earlier in their life. Or you could be exaggerating. Oh, he's exercising more than ever before. Meaning just a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay? So we can use the word ever to emphasize something is in all of history. Meaning you're telling the whole story and maybe it's too much. Or something is really extreme compared to the rest of history. Okay? Let's try this in a dialogue. Have I told you my life story? I can tell you about all the places I've ever been to. Hoo hoo! And if you just tell your life story, maybe you keep it simple. But he says, I can tell you about all the places I've ever been to. And so maybe start from when he was born and tell you one by one by one by one. That sounds a little bit too much. Too much detail, right? And so his friend says, please don't. You're the worst storyteller ever. So here, the worst storyteller ever. Using the word ever to say, in all of history, compared to every storyteller from the year zero until now, you're the worst. Uh, I think I'm the most okay storyteller ever. So, the most okay storyteller ever. That kind of sounds silly, right? Well, yeah. It's saying that compared to the rest of history, you're the most okay. So not good, not bad, but he thinks he's the most okay. Uh, not much of a compliment, right? Another way we can use ever is, tell me about your life. We can add ever to a question to ask about, oh, have you tried this before? Do you ever visit museums? I could ask you, do you visit muse museums? I'm asking about your routines, your habits. But I'm adding the word ever to emphasize. I want to find out, is it zero or once in a while? Maybe I think you don't do it, but I add ever to find out, once in a while, do you do it? So do you ever visit museums? We can also ask in the past tense, did you ever visit the zoo when you were little? Now this is talking about in the past. It has to be something that's finished. And I'm asking about when you were little. Did you ever visit the zoo when you were little? And maybe I think you didn't visit the zoo, but maybe once in a while. So the ever here is checking if you did it a little bit, okay? We can also ask with the present perfect tense. Have you ever eaten buffalo wings? So this is asking you about your life experience. If we're asking a question with the present perfect tense about what you've done in your life, we often add the word ever. And ever asks, did it happen even one time? So buffalo wings are chicken wings with hot spicy sauce. They're really popular in America. So have you ever eaten buffalo wings? So this is another way of asking, have you ever tried buffalo wings? And the way I ask this, it sounds like maybe I think you've never tried it. And then you could also ask with the future tense. Will you ever travel to Antarctica? So here, I'm asking you about the future. If I said, will you travel to Antarctica? 
I'm just asking generally about the future. But if I think maybe it won't happen, I can use the word ever to mean at any time. Maybe when you're 60 years old or 80 years old, will you ever travel to Antarctica? Maybe I think it's hard to do that because it's really, really cold at the bottom of the earth. Now, we can also ask questions using ever to show frustration. And you think that someone will not stop. Does Ted ever stop talking? <laughs> Maybe your friend Ted is going blah, 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 blah. And you go, oh God, does he ever stop talking? The ever emphasizes at any time. Does he just keep on going or will there be a time when he stops? And then we can use other tenses too. Has he ever shut up in his life? Was there ever a time? Can you find a time thinking about his life when he was quiet? Has he ever shut up? This is not a very nice thing to say, but when we're frustrated, we can say something like this. And then another thing you could say would be, will he ever be quiet? So now we're talking about the future. And I think this is not going to happen. I think he's just going to keep on going. Can we find a time in history or in the future where Ted will stop talking? Oh, geez, maybe Ted is really annoying. <laughs> so let's try a dialogue to practice ever. Do you ever watch anime? So someone might ask this kind of question to ask about your habits. Maybe they don't know. Do you ever watch anime? Is it a habit? Do you do it once in a while? And his friend says, no, I don't. So no, I don't ever watch anime. It never happens. And then the first guy says, have you ever watched anime? Meaning, in your life, did you ever try? So the first question is, is it one of your habits? Do you ever do it? Maybe one time every year? And he says, no, I don't. And then the next question was, have you ever watched anime? So in your life, did you watch a Japanese cartoon one time, maybe? Yes, I have, but it's not my thing. If he says, it's not my thing, that means he doesn't really like it. So he doesn't really like Japanese cartoons. And the first guy says, will you ever watch anime with me? So here he's talking about the future. In the future, will there be a time, will there be any time when you watch it with me? <laughs> Maybe we can watch a cool robot cartoon together. And the other guy says, uh, please go away. You're bothering me too much. <laughs> so maybe you love anime, but you have a friend who just can't stand it. We'll never watch it. Oh, too bad. Maybe you want to share that anime together, but your friend says, oh, please go away. I will never watch anime with you. Oh. This leads us into our next section, never have I ever. If we want to express that something does not happen, not even one time, we can use the words don't ever or never. So here's an example. Fred never thinks about money. He's always buying capsule toys. A capsule toy is a little toy that comes in a ball and you go and it comes out. They're pretty fun, but they're a little bit expensive. Fred never thinks about money. So you could say Fred does not think about money, but you want to make it stronger and say Fred never thinks about money. So we can use the word never to emphasize that it does not happen. Not even one time. Fred never thinks about money. He's always buying capsule toys. Oh, don't waste your money on capsule toys, even though they're cute. Here's another example. I've never had an iPhone before. So here, this is talking about in my life, an experience. And we use the word never to show it didn't happen even one time. Never. This is true about me. I have never had an iPhone. Surprise, right? I've never had an iPhone before. So we can use this to show in your life from the beginning till now, it didn't happen, not even one time. And then we can also talk about the future. 
You'll never ever get good grades if you don't study. So here we're emphasizing the future. It cannot happen. So you can say, you'll never get good grades. And if you want to make it even, even stronger, you can say, you'll never ever get good grades. Meaning there's no chance. It's impossible. You'll never ever get good grades if you don't study. If you just sit on the couch watching TV, are you going to get good grades? No way. Never ever. So in all these examples, the word never emphasizes that it doesn't even happen one, ta one time. So usually we use the word never, but you could also use doesn't ever. Fred doesn't ever think about money. You could also use haven't ever. Instead of I've never had an iPhone before, you could say I haven't ever had an iPhone before. Or about the future. Instead of you'll never ever get good grades, you could say you won't ever get good grades. Never is a little bit stronger though, okay? We can also do the same thing if our subject is negative. For example, no one ever invites me to parties anymore. So here we're not using the word never, but it's kind of the same idea. No one ever invites me to parties anymore. You feel like people don't invite you to parties. You don't get phone calls, you don't get invitations. Oh gosh. You could say, no one invites me to parties anymore. But if you want to make it stronger, it doesn't happen at any time. You can say, no one ever invites me to parties anymore. And of course, no one is the same as nobody. So you could say, nobody ever invites me to parties an anymore. Here's another example. Nothing ever happened between Bill and Rosemary. It just wasn't meant to be. Oh, what a sad story. A bad romance. Bill and Rosemary. They seemed like they might hit it off. Maybe they looked like they had a chance to fall in love. But, uh -uh, too bad. Nothing ever happened between Bill and Rosemary. You could say nothing happened between them. But if we use the word ever, it emphasizes and makes it stronger. That at any time, it just never happened. Just wasn't meant to be. Too bad. It wasn't meant to be, meaning that they never had a chance to get together. Fate decided that they weren't going to be a couple. Oh, too bad. Next up is maybe once in a while. So never is very strong or not ever is also very strong. But maybe we want to say it happens a little bit. Close to never, but not completely never. So we're trying to emphasize it's a very small amount, but not never. So here's an example. I barely ever talk to Mason anymore. He's too busy. So my friend Mason, he's too busy. And so I barely ever talk to Mason anymore. So here we can use barely ever, meaning it's a really, really, really small amount. Maybe I talk to him here once every year. Oh, too bad. We could say it another way using hardly ever. He hardly ever talks to me anymore. I'm too busy. So <laughs> he's too busy. I'm too busy. We just don't match up. So he hardly ever talks to me anymore. He only calls me once every two years. Oh, too bad. And then you could also say, we almost never talk to each other anymore. We're too busy. Mason and I used to be really close friends, but now we almost never talk to each other anymore. So it's showing that it's very, very, very close to never. Almost never. So all these phrases, barely ever, hardly ever, almost never, show that you're emphasizing that it's only a really tiny amount. It's not never, but really, really close to never. Okay, let's try a dialogue with some of these ideas. Before this summer, my friend Amy had never driven a car before. Oh my gosh, really? Never? So the word never is emphasizing that it didn't happen even one time. And the friend says, oh wow, how is she doing so far? So, so far means from beginning to drive till now. How is she doing so far? Yeah, is she getting better at it? 
pretty well. She barely ever hits other cars. What? Barely ever? That's not what we want to hear. You want to hear she never hits other cars, right? If you say she never hits other cars, that means not even one time. Zero, right? But she barely ever hits other cars. That means sometimes she does hit other cars. It's close to never, but not never. Maybe, boom, oops, just one. <laughs> it's okay. And then, doo -doo, boom, oop, just another one. Sorry, but I barely ever hit cars. Uh, barely ever is too many, okay? Now, next up, let's take a look at, here's some advice. We can use the word ever to give advice. You don't know if someone will do something, but at some time, if you do this thing, this is what you can do. For example, if you ever borrow your friend's car, you should drive extra carefully. Amy, you should remember this, okay? So here, ever means at any time. So we're talking about this imaginary situation in the future, maybe it'll happen, but we don't know. So if you ever borrow your friend's car, you should drive extra carefully. And I'm just giving you some advice. Here's what you can do if this happens. And you should drive extra carefully. Carefully is an adverb to describe how you should drive. But when Americans speak English, sometimes instead of an adverb, they'll use an adjective. They drop that L-Y. The grammar is wrong, but you might hear it. You should drive extra careful. So if you hear someone say that, they're speaking with bad grammar, but people say that all the time. Here's another example. Remember to take out the seeds if you ever cook with chipotle peppers. Chipotle peppers are a kind of hot, spicy pepper. Inside, the seeds are incredibly spicy. So I did this before. I was cooking some food, and I put in chipotle peppers, but I didn't take the seeds out. And my friends, when they ate the food, they were all sweating and crying. Oh, it's too spicy. It's the hottest thing ever. Ah. And so this is advice for you. If you have hot peppers, take out the seeds. Remember to take out the seeds if you ever cook with chipotle pepper. I don't know if it will happen, but if at any time in the future, here's what you need to remember, okay? Here's a dialogue to practice this. Jesus, the lottery shop is busier than ever. What's going on? The lottery shop is the place where you can buy scratch tickets or tickets for the lottery. Maybe you can win lots and lots of money. The lottery shop is busier than ever. Here's that adjective, than ever. So we're describing the lottery shop, saying it's super, super busy. And we're exaggerating, saying, it's more busy than all of history. What's going on? And his friend says, tonight's drawing is going to be bigger than ever. So the lottery, they will do a drawing. They pull numbers. And all the numbers together is the winning number. So tonight's drawing is going to be bigger than ever. So in all of history, it's never been so much money. Holy moly. And the first guy says, wow. If there's ever a time to buy a ticket, it must be now. So here is that way we can give advice. If there's ever a time to buy a ticket. I don't know if there is, but if there is, ever is, in history or in the future, if there's ever a time, it must be now. So let's go buy a ticket. Now, we can also use ever if we're talking about for a long time. Describing from the past until now. You, we can use ever to emphasize how long it's been. Here's an example. Dan has lived in D.C. ever since he finished college. D.C. means Washington, D.C. D.C. is the District of Columbia in the United States. It's the capital of the U.S. It's where the White House is. Dan has lived in D.C. ever since he finished college. So he finished college, and since then... He has lived in D.C. Now, why do I use ever since instead of just since? Well, it makes it stronger. It emphasizes that it didn't change. From finishing college until now, it never changed. 
The ever just makes it stronger and shows that it continued, never stopped. Here's another example. Ever since my apartment flooded, I've been nervous about doing laundry. This is about me. I was doing laundry and the, the washing machine went ba-boom and water went everywhere. Ah! So now, ever since my apartment flooded, I've been nervous about doing laundry. So that happened ever since then. So we could use since meaning from then till now, but ever since means it started from then till now and never stopped. The feeling continued the whole time. Ooh, my laundry, boom, water everywhere. So with these examples, you can see that something didn't change. We can use ever in another way to show something didn't change for all time. In all time, it's always been the same. Here's an example. The vet had to shave Jenny's dog, but he's as happy as ever. So the vet is a pet doctor. The dog went to the vet and the vet went and shaved the dog. Oh gosh, maybe the dog is gonna be cold and scary looking. You'd think the dog would be sad, right? No, nope. but he's as happy as ever. So this means the same as all time. Her dog is usually really happy and the dog is the same as usual. So as happy as ever. We can use as, adjective, as ever, meaning to say it's the same as all time. All of his life he's been happy and it's the same now. Here's another example. My coworker is as lazy as ever. He doesn't do anything. He's very, very lazy, and it's been happening for all time. So here we have as lazy as ever. It's continued from the beginning till now, and you're frustrated. The ever is emphasizing that it never changes. Oh, my coworker is as lazy as ever. Okay, let's try these in a dialogue. Ever since aliens took Harry away, he's acted strange. Aliens took Harry away. Oh geez, Harry, bye-bye. And he came back, that's good. But, oh, ever since aliens took Harry away, from then till now, hmm, he's acted strange. Really? He's as funny as ever. So before, Harry was a funny guy, and now he's still a funny guy. He's as funny as ever, nothing changed. And the first guy says, uh, is he being funny? I think I heard him say, brains are the best snack ever. He says, is he being funny? So if someone's being funny, the way he's acting, the things he's saying, that's the way he's being. We learned that a while back, remember? And then he says, I think I heard him say, brains are the best snack ever. In all of history, he thinks the best snack is brains. Oh my gosh. Maybe Harry's a little bit weird. Stay away from Harry. He might bite you, okay? In this lesson we learned ever shows at any time or in your life. So it emphasizes things and makes it stronger. Talking about the history of the world. And then we learned never or not ever strongly shows that something doesn't happen. So not even one time. And then we learned ever since shows what has been true from a certain time. So since then, but ever since then, meaning it continued on and it's been true the whole time. So next up, it's your turn. I want you to try to use ever and never in the related phrases to translate these sentences from Chinese into English. This is my first time I've seen my first time. 但你之后有可能原谅我吗? 我几乎不吃薯条,因为太肥了。Oh yeah, it's not very good for you, huh? Bob,有在跟女生约会吗? 我从来没看过他跟女生说话。Oh, really? He's always alone and being strange. 自从我用过棉质马桶后,我再也无法忍受一般马桶了。Try to translate these from Chinese to English and leave a message in our Facebook group. Okay, I'll see you next time.
拜拜。